We're going to look at financial literacy. So the first thing we're going to talk about is debit versus credit. So we need to know that debit is plastic money that we do have. So that is our money and it is going to be in our bank account. So we can use that because it is our money in our bank account, in the bank. You could also hear it called a checking account. Those are both the same thing, a banking and checking account. And again, that is our money. The next thing we can talk about <clears throat> is a credit card. And credit is money, plastic money, so on a card that we do not have. Okay, that is money that we do not have. And we have to pay that money back with interest. Interest is what people charge us extra to borrow that money. They're not going to give us money for free. So interest is extra. And then down here in the middle, we have debit and credit. And those are just some key words. So if you're reading a word problem, you can look for either these or these keywords, and those will help you figure out whether you're working with debit or credit in word problems. So now we do have a word problem that we're gonna use. Mr. Lloyd wants to buy a new television, but he does not have enough money. Does not have enough money in his bank account to pay for one. Which of these is not an option for Mr. Lloyd. So we know he does not have enough money and we wanna know which one is not an option. So essentially which one is false. So if he does not have enough money, that's gonna be credit if he's using a card today. So he can use his credit card, we just talked about that, to buy it right now. And we just said if he does not have enough money, he can do that. Okay, he can save money and pay cash at a later date. So if we save money and pay cash later, that is definitely true. Anybody can do that. He can use his debit card to buy the TV now. We talked about debit means we do have money, but we talked about Mr. Lloyd does not have enough money. So we cannot do H and he can save money and use his debit card to buy the TV later. So if he saves his money, he can do that. So our answer would be H. And obviously we really need to know, information stays on our credit report for seven to 10 years. A credit report is kind of like a uh, report card, whether or not you pay your money back. So now let's move into this check register. So lots of vocabulary here. The first vocabulary we're gonna talk about is putting money in your bank and that is called a deposit. So a deposit means we are putting money in the bank. And if we put money in the bank, our balance goes up. So deposit, put in, goes up. The opposite of that would be taking money out, with, which is a withdrawal. So if you are taking money out of your account, it's gonna go down. Hopefully we know those vocabulary terms. The next one is when you move money. If I'm moving money, so if I have a savings account and a checking account, moving money is called a transfer. So that means I have more than one account and I can move that money back and forth, okay? And then lastly, the total amount of money in our account is going to be our balance. So that is the total amount. And then this is what a check register looks like and we're gonna work through this problem. So a portion of Rawls check register is shown his checking account had a balance of $539.50 on April 2nd. Based on the information in the check register, what was the balance of Rolls checking account after the transaction on April 13th in dollars and cents? 
So the first thing we need to pay attention to is that word balance. This right here is his balance. That is what we are going to start with. We always start at the top of a check register and work our way down. So this is the top amount of money and that is his balance, which we talked about was his total. The next thing we need to pay attention to is withdrawal. We talked about that's taking money out. So those are gonna be minuses and deposits are putting money in. So those are gonna be pluses. So let's look. I'm gonna start with the balance. And then if I look here at 3550, it is in the withdrawal. So that means I'm gonna subtract 3550. 2375 is also in withdrawal. So that's a subtract but $55 is in deposit, so I'm gonna add that, okay? But again, the most important part is we have to start with the balance. So let's go down here and let's work out this problem. So I have to start with $539.50. Again, that's our balance, and I am going to subtract $35.50 because it was the second thing that we saw. So I am going to line up my decimals because we're subtracting, so 3550, and I am going to subtract that. I get zero, five minus five is zero, bring down my decimal, nine minus five is four, three minus three is zero, and then I have five. So that is the first part. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do my next withdrawal because it's what comes next when I'm working my way down. So now I am going to subtract 2375. So I am going to take that $504 that I just got from here and I am going to do 2375 and I am going to subtract. So I can't, bar, can't subtract from zeros, so I'm gonna have to borrow. Four becomes a three. That zero does not become a 10, it becomes a nine, because I need to go all the way home. And then I can do 10 minus five, nine minus seven, bring down my decimal, three minus three, and then I need to borrow again. Five becomes a four, that does become a 10, so I get eight and four. So I have 480 and 25 cents. That is that transaction. And now I have a deposit. So remember we talked about deposits mean to add. So now I'm gonna take my 480 and 25 cents and I am going to add $55 because that was a deposit. So I have five, two, five, 13 and five. So my final answer is $535 and 25 cents. And I can circle it because it is my final answer. And then we are almost done. We have one more page. All right, <clears throat> this is the next part we're talking about. This is after you graduate and go off to find a job. So post-secondary, the first thing we're gonna talk about is annual. Annual means that it happens once a year. So one time a year. The next word we need to know is salary. Salary is how much money you make. So if you hear something like annual salary, that's how much money you make in one year. So let's look at example number three. The table shows the approximate median annual salary associated with two levels of education. Based on the data in the table, how much more money would a person with a master's degree earn than a person with a bachelor's degree over 35 years? So I really need to pay attention to that word annual. It's here and it's here. Okay, so again, that means one year. We want 35 years. So I'm gonna have to do something with that. And I want bachelor's and master's. And the most important part is it says how much more. Hopefully we know how much more means to subtract. So I am going to subtract bachelors and masters because it says masters and bachelors. So let's go ahead and do that subtraction. I have 69,100, bigger number goes on top, and 57,600, 
And again, I'm gonna subtract those. I get zero, zero, nine becomes an eight, and 11, so that's five, one, one. So 11,500. But again, that was annual, so one year. Now we need to make that 35 years. So to do that, I need to multiply. So I'm gonna take that 11,500, and I'm gonna multiply that by 35. Again, annual means one year, we need 35 years. So five times zero, five times zero, five times five, five times one plus two is seven, and five times five, I get that for the first row. I'm going to mark out my carry, my five, and put my smiley face. And then I'm gonna do my second row. Three times zero, three times zero, three times five is 15. Three times one plus one is four, and three times one. Okay? <clears throat> now I can add all of that up. I get zero, zero, five. Then I get 12. And then I get 10 and four. So now I have my final answer. And again, we are doing 35 years, not just one, because annual means one.